September 7th, 10 a.m. It's time to add your Edgeworth. Court is now accepted for the trial of Miss Bay at my effect. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on me in, in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, uh, well, holy crap. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt these facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. We may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls Chief of Officer of this at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir! My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir! I'm detective in charge of homicide down at the precinct, sir! Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir! Let's use the floor map of the office to explain, sir! The body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir! The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir! It was heavy enough to deal to the to, to, to de deadly weapon even in a girl's hand, sir! The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. They've got to be stupid. Now, detective. Yes, sir! You immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir! I had hard evidence she did it, sir! Huh? Detective Gumshoe? Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Two people there already. The defendant, Ms. Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Ms. Maya Faye. Why? She had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Ms. Maya Faye at the very moment of the murder. I don't like that at all. The very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright, you may give me your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? Couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. Smack! Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in the witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked a lot of times. I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. All right, let's give this a try. Something to matter? No, Your Honor, I'd like to begin my cross-examination. So this is where we use hold it. Hold it! Who did you say you got a call from? Hey pal, don't play dumb, you know who. The call is from the customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across the street crime scene. Okay, I pressed. Not sure I did much, though. Right, continue. Hold on just one second. Yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had a hard account, she said, right? Because of a hard account, she did it, right? Huh? Did, did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about the suspicious woman in Pig's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May is suspicious? And she sure is a pig, pal. Well, I, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um, hmm. I guess Prezi can have his advantages. Yes. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There's something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab results showed that the blood of, that was blood of the victims. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. 
Now you're like that. That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, detective. Your Honor, why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, da, da, da. I'm really embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Be more careful. Very well, your defense will begin its cross-examination. I don't believe that. Detective Gumshoe. Do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually writes the killer's name? Sure, it happens all the time in books and movies. Gumshoe, are you stupid? This isn't a movie, detective. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Uh, I guess I haven't had that many cases, no. Don't you find it a little odd that Victor would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister? Uh, y yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order, order! That didn't go so well. That's right, what he said. It's his whole testimony. There has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Oh. Then who did write it, smarty pants? Who, uh... The killer! The killer. Anyone can see that. Oh. You're saying the killer wrote her own name, buddy, please. She was framed. Hold on. If that's the case, where's your evidence? Ah. Uh... I guess that was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal. Y'all don't got no real evidence either. What was written on that memo you found? What kind of tests were these again? What kind? Um, well, I hear they take uh, little bits of the blood, the uh, hemi, hemi, herma, herma goblins. Uh, I refuse to test for this matter. I'm no expert on blood tests. Detective Gumshoe, I look forward to your next evaluation as you should you. That was a mess. Oh! 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 I got it! I got it! I'm so dumb! I'm so dumb! OBJECTION! Detective Gumshoe! There's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say the victim, Mia Faye, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Faye. That's really what you're saying? But what? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could've? You have it backwards, detective. B backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow, blow from a blood object. She died immediately. But, no but ting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have, been, wouldn't have had their time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? When? When did I obtain the autopsy? It will be the day after, right? I'm finna save. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being, That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from the blunt from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. 
No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Dang it! Dang it! Should have known you have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? What is a sham? You're a sham, Mr. Edgeworth. I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have to request a second autopsy report? Pass on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will, this evidence and this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Court accepts the evidence. Well, Your Honor, evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. Suppose that's an obvious conclusion, yes? Arn, right, this isn't good. Prosecution would like to call us next witness. The poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent? Witness your name, please. April May, at your service. Order! An introduction should not require any reaction for the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Uh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us where you were on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred. Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across the Fay and Cola offices. Um, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. All right, let's get this. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman like dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and she hit her. And then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end, that's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. Stop winking. Hmm. Well, Your Honor, I see it is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any- Wait, Your Honor! Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? Thought the witness testimony was just now was firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Mia Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults and perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, begin the cross-examination. Nine o'clock at night. Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, uh, gee. What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sorta, you know, had a feeling. I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press her a little harder on this one. See how far I can run with this. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I, uh... Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. Badgering? You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Order! Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl, what about poor me? You looked out the window, what did you see next? How do you know she was a defendant? 
Huh? Well, you know, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. I question it. Hold on a minute! That testimony stinks! What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Ooh. I don't know about, she definitely saw something, but I think she's lying about it. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning of this? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But still, we don't know if she was dressed that way on the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her, and so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Don't growl at me! What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I saw what I saw, and you saw wrong! I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please, remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. You disgust me. Testimony again, if you would. I almost had her. Alright, get to talking! I did see everything I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. And then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with the weapon. I saw it. I did. That clock, um, that kind of statuey clock. The thinker, I think. Does the accuracy of my report not startle you? I see. I only wish you'd been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. I have an issue with what she just said. I have an issue with this. A clock. Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm on to something now. Okay, I'm thinking this. I'm thinking this. Your Honor, that statement contradicts his evidence. It does? Oh! Let me see this one more time. It's confusing to me because everybody else just kind of forgot it was a clock. And this person who shouldn't know that it's a clock knows that it's a clock. I'm gonna use a thinker because she shouldn't know that this is a clock. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? Shut up! You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that by just looking at it. Another person in the much same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder! Order, order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? The witness saw the murder with their own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issues with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue your question with the witness. That was close. He stopped me there, the trial would be over. Uh, what? So what happens now? 
What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That? Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it. I say the time. So you've been to the law offices of Fay & Co? No? Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard from my hotel room. The law offices of Fay & Co are where the murder took place. It's very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No! I have evidence that contradicts that! No, Your Honor! I can't give up now! I'm not satisfied because... It couldn't have wrong! Your Honor, members of the court... It's inconceivable that the clock ran in question! It's broken! It's broken! It says so in here! Figure tell time is not, is not working! Exactly! Took the clockwork out. It's empty! That clock is missing its clockwork! How could you possibly just take a look right now? Oh, see anything interesting, Your Honor? It's just the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain the court the meaning of this? It's as you can see. The clock was empty, it couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat, ugly, stupid, fat, ugly, liar. Fat? <laughs> well, Miss May, Quite a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock was empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? I, I got the answer for that, buddy! If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. That's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clock was removed? Uh, impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who said, t who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence has proved that the clock was removed is... Uh, pre present the evidence, present it. Take that! Take a look at this! That's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, ooh, you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is a defendant's cell phone and it contains a recording. A recording of the conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order! The defendant's cell phone? This wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it. The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. Gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. I'm not. Let's hear the conversation. Want me to hold on to the thinker for you then, if you could? I should probably tell you that the clock isn't talking right now. It's not working, that's lame. Had to take out the clockwork. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear. The clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was, well, before the witness ever arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Uh, what was it? Uh, the store I go to? Oh, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. The witness had seen it before. That would make sense. This is- YES! The witness claims she had seen it before, but this directly co contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then let's see it. Please reduce his evidence. It's simple. This clock was never in any store ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world, and the one that isn't here is in police custody. 
Impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, excuses are not on sale today? Hold on- Hey, whoa! Why is it- Why is it- Whoa! Bro, she locked in! What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid club doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it! Die! Wow, okay. Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of the law, and the witness will remain calm. Oh, uh, silly, silly me. Did I, uh, did I like Lucy? I guess I did. Okay. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know that weapon was a clock? Oh, dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? This is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of this matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... You had heard about it? The witness never held held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. Heard? That is correct, Your Honor. The wiretap! There was no other way she could have known to think it was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me the evidence proving the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Have a look at this. De de I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Mia, Miss Mia May's phone, were you not? Objection. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. And if that was the case, which it is not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can, it's simple. What? Here's my proof. Right here! I already showed you the proof! I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Have not called in a while? Okay, okay. It's a clock. Made you look like the thinker. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <sighs> witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May, shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that, you, you lawyer? Why she say it like it was a slur? Like, like, she called me a lawyer like she just called me a nigger or something. It's no fair. All of you ganking up on me like that. Oh, so I'm a bad girl now. Is that it? Is that it? That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Did she do it? She couldn't have did it. Why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping ir irrelevant? She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. Why this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? I'd like to see her pull that off. 
Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Dang, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who thought that, and of course I can and will. You can't be serious. Way, I say way. And I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Okay, so the killing happened around 9 o'clock at night. Why? That's just when I was getting ready to service for my service for my sweet bellboy. Room service. Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know, like normal coffee but cold. And if you don't if you don't drink it quick, it melts, and then you have regular cold coffee. She's just chit-chatting, bruh. The witness is not the scene. The witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. Where does this leave us? It'll be my displeasure to it'll be my great displeasure to inform you. That the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, this is separate this is this is a separate crime with no bearing to the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit murder. No, this is gonna let her walk away. Therefore, no there's no way I can I can win unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Um, well, come on, think of something. Huh, what should I say? Call the bellboy as a witness or examine Miss May. I want to keep examining her. Oh, Mr. Wright! Mr. Wright! Call the bellboy! The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've something quite low enough. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy. Then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Ms. Maya Faye. That is my condition. What? I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Alright, I've got nothing to lose except for everything. Understood, I accept your condition. <laughs> cool. You fell right into my trap. Uh-oh. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. We were ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Why do you have that? See, there's someone in the middle of work, sir. I'd be happy to serve you. He said looks rather heavy, so without further ado, when will begin his testimony? Head bellboy, okay, four generations, received a call after 8 a.m. in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 on the dot. I brought it to her precisely at the requested time, of course. I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. I'm ready, I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished. He received the call early. She planned. It seems like she planned for an alibi. Are you sure it was Miss May on the phone? Absolutely, sir. How can you be so certain? Heard her voice, then I saw, and then I saw them, and I, ahem. Point being, I remembered her quite well. Nine on the dot, you say? Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching the program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine on the... Nine o'clock, the time of the murder. Why on the dot? Wouldn't have any reason to lie. 
to find something I can use. One more time. I'll press him until he spills the beans. Precisely 9 o'clock then. Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir, 9 p.m. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, I'd like iced coffee at exactly 9 o'clock. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on the door at the crack of 9. Why would she be so particular about the time? You're sure with Miss April May? Absolutely. Abso- as in so very absolutely. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Brought the room service. She... Very, sir. Is that a French for embrace? It's French for kiss. But not a French kiss, sir. More like a peck on the cheek. Believe I was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor. Moment I shall never forget. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is that it? You understand. This bellboy has no reason to lie. Any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination. I can't let this happen, can I? Protest! Wait! Please, wait! Yes, the defense has something to ask. One last question. Let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question. That's all. This is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? I don't know the check-in. Tell me about the check-in. Tell me about when you checked in, Miss May. All right. First thought she was beautiful, type of girl, so was, she's just my type of girl, so it was a disappointment. I see. Excuse me, what exactly was a disappointment? Well, I'm not without charm, sir, but even I have a little chance with her lover there. What did he say? What did you say? Ah, uh, or rather quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Er, uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you were... Uh, you didn't ask. Nice try. That sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Yes, quite, indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister over there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't as specifically asked, sir. You, you fool! Oh, he got caught being messy! I've done it, I've won! Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man, correct? Yes, sir. Then when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room. That's right, sir. Your honor, we have just learned that another person involved, pers we just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hope that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who was this other person? Simple, it was. The man with Miss May. The man who checked in with Miss May. Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bub boy saw no one else in that room at the time of the murder. My, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man in the court. Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. 
The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect prosecution and defense to look to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes, yes, Your Honor. That is all for the day for the trial of Maya Faye. Court is adjourned. Mr. Wright, you were amazing in there. Really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know? <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sends shivers up my spine. If you say so. So what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Well, no, I don't think so. Not yet. I see. But I got a great lead in but I got a great lead in today's trial. The man with my effect, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Maya Faye after that anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess her learn- I guess her- I guess she's learning her charms on work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I might have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm gonna find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who- Maybe so. Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow, I promise. I'm counting on you. As for a full record of April May's testimony, I thought it might come in handy during tomorrow's trial. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in an detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. Wowza! Y'all know how your boy get when I read a lot. I get lightheaded, and I'm feeling tired. That's the, that's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and read them all. Tap into the next one. I'm really rocking with this game, bro. I, I never really thought I'd be too interested in this. If I'm being honest, but I'm really rocking with this for real. Peace out. I love y'all. Tap in.